Now this next one, it says tuning elite receivers more separation versus defensive backs. And you can see he really gets a lot of separation. That was insane. He just sends him flying. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable mutt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Man Cheese, as always. Got another update video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over probably the largest patch by far so far in the Madden 23 season. This is the September 8th patch. Uh, and this is way bigger than the first patch. The first patch was really only about the loop blitz. Uh, they tried to address some of the blocking when it comes to like how the tackles couldn't really rotate quick enough to pick up some of the out outside blitzes. This one is much bigger. This is a huge patch. Uh, and it's not surprising that they're doing it on the same day that NBA 2K is coming out. They're trying to get as much publicity away from NBA 2K as possible because they know that that's probably the biggest competition that they have when it comes in sports gaming, especially in the American market, which is where football really dominates. So before I get into that, though, I'm going to tell you guys some other big news. If you don't have any, if you don't have Madden 23 yet, you actually can play Madden 23 free all weekend, which is once again another thing they're doing to try to you know undercut 2K as 2 NBA. 2K comes out tonight. They're probably also doing it based off the fact that, you know, there is uh, an NFL game tonight and there's going to be football this weekend. So I'm sure that they're celebrating the start of the new season with that. You can pick it up for free right now, play for free all weekend uh, on Xbox or PlayStation. I'm not sure about PC or anything like that. I'm not sure if it's on Steam or how they have that set up there. But if you're on Xbox or PlayStation, current gen or next gen, you can play the game free all weekend. Other than that, if you guys want to see more update videos, as always, if you're, if you're liking the content that I'm bringing you, please. Please be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Now, since the first one really was a lot of tuning about blocking, we're going to start off with blocking because there's a couple of really interesting ones here. The first one that really stands out to me, there's a lot to do with run blocking, which wasn't really in the first patch, but I'm going to stick to pass blocking first because that seems to be an issue that they're still having uh, a lot of problems with or they're still working through. The one that, I, that jumps off the page to me is tuning to pass block movement to make pass blockers commit sooner to rushers nearing the line of scrimmage at the snap. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, because a lot of blitzes, especially in the ebooks that I put out, you really want to uh, hover a gap and then pull your user back post-snap to try to pull the blocker. It still works the same way. If you hover the gap with a blitzer and drop back, the blocker typically follows. But I was noticing a lot pre-patch that the blocker wouldn't even pay attention to you. You'd be right in front of a guard over a gap or the center or whatever and a lot of times they wouldn't pay attention to you. So I'm guessing that a lot of people were just shooting those gaps or something. It says they also tuned to improve pass block prediction to better anticipate the direction of the rusher when coming out of their stance. A lot of times when guys are coming off the edge in a pass block it's like they you can just see that they're getting off they're getting too uh too far around the tackle just like from the jump so this is hopefully going to make it to a point where edge rushers specifically aren't getting to the outside shoulder or of the lineman to the point where it's like they're basically getting like instant sheds now they also tuned uh the pass block handoff logic which basically means that when uh, guys are loop blitzing or something like that or are running stunts which aren't very commonly used in the game i did put out a blitz recently that still works by the way i did actually just mess with it a little bit and it still works out i'll have a link in the description for that blitz but it works a little bit differently they basically tune handoff logic which means that when guys are switching they'll basically pass them from guard to tackle a little bit better uh, and things like that it's something that i was calling a, a switch blitz or getting switch pressure uh, where basically if you just had a lot of linemen flipping and switching to a point where you could you know maximize the fact that linemen don't hand off very well so they're basically um changed they basically adjusted that so now hopefully they'll 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 handle uh switching defensive linemen back and forth between offensive linemen better it looks like they're tuning uh run blocking too to try to pick up on people that are shooting gaps so that's something that honestly i didn't find shooting gaps was as easy as it was last year i felt shooting gaps was already a little bit harder that you get picked up more often by linemen but it says that they tuned that as well they they tuned uh, pursuit to improve the blocking path against user control defenders to better pick up user linebackers stacking behind defensive linemen and shooting gaps. That's a trick that's been around since last year. Essentially, you just stand off into the left or right behind a defensive tackle, maybe about five yards uh, behind either one, and you could just shoot gaps a lot of times and, and just you know shut people down on inside zones and stuff like that very easily. 
So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try it on both sides. I tried it on the one side there. You can see it didn't really work out. You see on this side here, once again, he does pick up. You see how the guard rotates over and picks me up. I mean, that's that's much improved. I'll go and I'll do this one more time just to show how that works. Uh, but you can see it didn't necessarily help the run play. I don't think the run play got any further. But uh, I mean, you can still go around that block. <laughs> you can see the uh, the lineman does try to jump out on me. I wonder if it's something that can be resolved simply by stepping back further. I'll go ahead and I'll just step back about, you know, eight yards here and see if that guy is still paying attention. You can see he's not. So it's really just based off of, it's just picking me up the closer I am to the line of scrimmage. I mean, at this point, I am a little less effective. Like I see, about, about eight yards back here. Like I said, I can, you know, he does pick me up at that point. But you can see it's not necessarily helping the run play because the blocking is different. So shooting gaps. He's definitely going to be gone, but will it help the run at the end of the day? It's really hard to say. Like I said, I'll try to stand back here one more time. And you can see I can shoot that gap from way back, but by the time I do, he's gone. So they really did a better job of tuning the effectiveness of doing that based off the fact that you have to be so far back that it really doesn't help you anymore. Now, one of the biggest additions to this uh, particular update that I think a lot of people are going to be excited about, I don't usually care about this type of stuff, to be honest with you, but they did add uh, new alternate helmets. Uh, to the gameplay which is something that they said they were going to do pretty quickly and they did so if you're going to use the all white bangles uh, like I got here that's in the game I don't even really remember what all the current alternate uh, uniforms all the current color rush alternate uniforms are but I know the bangles is one of the ones that stood out now when it comes to the NFL authenticity updates to the gameplay it says that they uh, improved uniform degradation improvements which means you know as the game goes on your uniforms getting dirtier or it's getting um, you know, you know, the grass, the mud, whatever. So that's a cool improvement. It also looks like all the first round rookies now have their accurate player likenesses, which is really cool uh, because obviously they're the biggest, uh, you know, the ones that people know the most based on the fact that they were their team's first round picks. Now they did fix a lot of small gameplay issues and I'm sure a lot of people didn't know about. Things like uh, the ball carrying skill move where you could basically switch the ball back and forth by tapping. I think it was the right bumper. I'm not even really sure because I don't really do it that much. But switching the ball back and forth between hands did give you a little bit of a speed boost. I, tr I actually was going to make a video about it or add it to a video an offensive cheats video that i did but i the test that i ran i really didn't notice a huge speed difference so whether i was wasn't doing it right or whatever it apparently was an issue because they did address that so it says they tuned ball carrier skill moves to reduce drastic changes in speed so i'm sure that's what they were talking about that's something that's not gonna be in the game anymore also they tuned to reduce max distance on blow up blocker interactions for user controlled defenders so i guess it means you have to be closer to blow up a block now with a hit stick which before i guess you had to be further away so now you're gonna have to be a lot closer to use that next it says fix an issue allowing the tight end to be assigned incorrect hot routes after using specific pre-snap motions in bunch basically what they're saying is you can't block the tight end in, in gun bunches anymore which is something that was they patched i guess to make it so that you can't do that anymore even though he's technically in line you used to be able to motion him across and he would stop right next to the left tackle and then you could put him on a pass block apparently you can't do that anymore but i think the issue they were trying to address is you could slant your tight end which is also something they patched a long time ago and that still works so i'm not sure what specific issue they're talking about that uh, they don't want the tight end to be able to do because you can obviously slant your tight end which is still a very uh, very hard to stop route that's why they took it away from your hot routes uh, but yeah, I don't know what they addressed, but this is something that I would have thought it would have been about and it clearly wasn't. Now it also says that they tuned to reduce fumble chance for wide receivers playing in the halfback position. This is more specifically in the Debo package. Um, I, I got to be honest with you, I use it quite a bit. I didn't notice a ton of fumbling, but apparently in the playbook where the wide receivers intentionally placed at the halfback position, such as those found in the 49ers and Rams, I wasn't even aware there was one in the Rams, the risk of fumbling was too high. Playing out of position will still carry a higher fumble chance than not, but it will lo no longer be as significant of a risk based on these real life playbook changes utilizing players like 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel. So we're just going to run this a couple times to see if we still get a fumble. I'm not really concerned with the outcome of the run play. I'm just going to run it five times just to see if uh, Debo fumbles. I think Debo specifically, um, you know, they mentioned him specifically, so I wonder if they're making it to the point where he's not going to fumble in this package. So now we got Tyreek Hill in that package, which is probably going to be a much more popular way that people want to go based on the fact that he's so fast. 
and we're just going to run it five times with him to see what happens. I mean, you can see the speed difference. Like I said, I'm just running. I'm going to run straight into people to see if I get any fumbles because we haven't fumbled yet. And then boom, you can see Tyreek Hill fumbles on, I think, what was the third run. Now, this next one, it says tuning to give elite receivers more uh, separation versus defensive backs in man press. So I got Tyreek Hill out here on a cover two press. And you can see he really gets a lot of separation. That was insane. We got to watch the replay on that. He definitely got some crazy separation there. So running cover two man, you don't even really need a lot of, uh, you don't even really, he just like fumped, like stumbled out of his break. You don't even really need a good cover two man play. Look at how much separation that guy gets. He just sends him flying. So yeah, you don't want to press Tyree Kill. You don't want to press Tyree Kill anymore. That's going to be an issue. So yeah, anytime you press elite cornerbacks or elite receivers like this, you're going to get you're going to have a problem. So do not press elite receivers anymore. Now it also says they tuned to better conserve momentum of wide receivers during mid-air collisions with defensive backs. It appears to me that they're trying to tune aggressive catching down with that move. Because I noticed, I don't, when they say momentum of the receiver, it was kind of overpowered. Like the receiver could really take out a defensive player or move them off the spot very easily. So that's what they're trying to do there. They're trying to reduce the overpowered nature of aggressive catching with that. Now, a couple other small ones. It says tuning to reduce the catch chance of tip passes. That was something that, you know, they're saying that there's just, there's articles saying there's way too many interceptions in the game. So that's probably why they're doing that. It says the updated nickel alignment position in nickel and dime cover two man plays versus bunch formation. So you can see now they're all pressing. In the past, they couldn't necessarily get to the position where they were pressing. Before, the defensive players couldn't be right in front of the receivers and it would allow for a lot of free releases off the lines in a lot of positions. And last but not least, it also says they updated the Detroit Lions NFL Live defensive playbook to add 4-3 defense to the book. For people that were having issues with franchise updates, there's a lot of stuff on here. It says fixed an issue where user to user trades in online leagues were not working. That's pretty simple. Obviously, uh, that's gotta be frustrating. Fixed an issue where CPU teams were not correctly using the franchise tag. I saw a video once where somebody was saying that um, there were so many top priority free agents like some of the biggest names in the league were getting uh basically to the free agent market which obviously that's what this issue is trying to correct it says they tune the qb simulation stats to reduce the number of plays being run in games to lower overall player and team stats league wide so if you sim an entire season uh, i don't know what was happening before maybe where players were thrown for 5,000, 6,000 yards that's what it sounds like it says they noticed as seasons it progressed there would be far too many highly rated qbs across Across the league when compared to the base rosters to combat this we slightly increased qb regression as they get older this paired with the qb sim stats tuning which they just which i just mentioned uh, essentially quarterbacks were just getting overpowered which is kind of realistic because to be honest with you the way that the league in the nfl has constantly changed the rules to benefit passing we're seeing 5,000 passing yards way more than we have in the past let me know in the comment section what you guys think i'm going to go ahead and end the video there i'm not going to read every little one i just wanted to read the most important ones when it came to gameplay and when it came to the modes that most people play if you guys want to see more videos like this as always please hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below